the drive to create. Defined for thousands of years as divine feminine energy. Its expressions found through the work of dreamers, truth seekers, sisters, performers, storytellers, entertainers, mothers, artists, creators. Women. It's a collective spirit shared by the five women we are about to meet, all using their life and talents for creative expression. As a career, it's a journey filled with uncertainty, stereotypes and labels. And in the moment you've reached the highest of the heights, you can also be starting at the beginning again. Empowered by the calling in their hearts, the determination of their minds, and the strength of their bodies, we dive into the pulse of our artists' eclectic lives and answer the question, why are you driven? What drives me? There's so many things that drive me. <sighs> what drives me? What drives me? Who is Raquel Castro? I don't, nobody thinks about these things. No one's like, oh, well, what makes me tick? I am a singer slash dancer slash actress. Hi, I'm Paula Shea. I'm from New York City. My name is Juliet Fisher Shuline. My name is Ermac. I'm from Turkey and Long Island, and I live in the Bronx now. I dance and I act and I sing, and my latest love is the aerial arts. I am an open format DJ. My name is Drea Weber. I'm an aerial designer, director, creator, choreographer, performer. I am a dancer. I'm a jewelry and clothing designer. Actor, producer, dancer, gymnast writer, singer, la la la. Anything that I can do as, to use as an expressive form and anything that can help me storytell. She may be the youngest voice in the competition, but she's ready to bring it. Raquel Castro. The best way I can describe myself is real. And I've always told myself I, I don't want to be a product of someone else's imagination because I have my own imagination. If you listen to my music, I want people to be like, I get her. I worked with producers when I was about 14, 15, and it ended up not working out, and that's when I went on The Voice, when I was 16 years old. It was my first step into the music industry, um, and I got to perform in front of amazing people. I've chosen Raquel Castro. So I, I barely had any training or any idea of what I was getting myself into. Raquel, by pulling in the brakes a little bit. I just knew that I loved to sing and I loved to perform and I loved to be on stage and entertain people. I want to be the type of artist that does empower women because there's so many women that have empowered me. When I speak in my music, that's when the vulnerability comes out and that's when I get the feelings out there. You smile, I smile. There's so many things that I want to say, it's just, you know, it's a matter of people wanting to hear them. I just always naturally found myself to be a dancer. It just kind of progressed into something that I did to earn a living and make money. When the whole feather thing was in, I was looking for some custom feather jewelry and everything that I looked at was like $400. I was like, uh... I could do this. Why am I paying for this? I didn't think that I was gonna be a DJ. I got obsessed with it. Uh, one day I was playing around with my best friend's equipment. The week after that, I went to Guitar Center, practiced for the next two months, and it just became like this obsession that I had. It all happened kind of fast, actually. I didn't think that 
a hobby would turn into a career. I've choreographed now and created and helped design aerials for like 18 pop tours. Madonna, Michael Jackson, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Pink four times, Cher twice, Christina Aguilera. And I remember the moment. I was in the car with my mom, who was a singer and an actor, and I was like, I want to be an actor. And she goes, all right, well, we'll take you to the agency and we'll see what happens. And then as I got older and Cirque du Soleil became more popular, I started to delve into the aerial arts and realize that you could tell stories. You could have little mini arcs in a song. You could have a beginning, middle, and end. We have to feed our own monster. And our monster is our creativity. An artist is not someone who just sings. An artist is someone who has a story. If you want to be an artist, every moment is artistic. A true artist has that knowledge of self-worth, of who they are, what they want to be, and what they want to project. They're not just there to take th that person's direction and just say it. They're going to take that person's direction, and they're going to figure out how it works inside them. I think an artist is someone who can entertain people, who can touch people's hearts. You know, the, in its purest form, if you can entertain an audience, I think you're pretty golden. I would consider myself an artist. I don't think I had a moment like, ah, that's what I want to do. You always have to prove yourself, not just an artist, but as a female. I think that I just was. You know, for me, I just don't have it. I just don't have that thing. I was like, don't call me an art. Don't call me an entertainer. Don't call me an artist. I'm no snot nose, you know, elitist. Or you know, what you could you could fall on either side of the fence about it. So I don't get tangled up in that. I don't really care. I don't really care what anybody calls me. I prefer the term performer just because it encompasses more than just one thing because I've been doing this performing thing for a long time and I've had to reinvent myself a lot. And for performers, we are the product we're selling. So when I had my son, all of a sudden, life wasn't about me and I found it very hard to be the performer I needed to be and also be the mother I wanted to be. I had been raising kids for nine years, and I was trying to start to get back into the business. And at that point, I was getting a lot of no's in my life in general. I was being told I was too old for a lot of things. Anything physical like that, your shelf life is short. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like dog years, you know. I'm about 370 in dance or aerial years. So my 40th birthday was approaching, and I remember just thinking, <laughs> Screw you, you know, screw everybody. I'm so tired of being told I can't do something. That's when the silks came into our gym. And so I got up there and I practiced every day. I Facebooked a video of me doing this and just said, this is what 40 looks like. The show business in general, any, of any kind of show business is difficult for a woman, period. But an older woman, it's a lot more difficult. There used to be a time where aging women were viewed for their learned wisdom and developed grace. But today, in both life and art, aging presents a struggle for women, as it somehow equals less than, rather than more. My name is April Gooding, and I'm the sister of Cuba Gooding Jr. So my family's in the industry. My father is the lead singer of The Main Ingredient. I got into it a little later than my brothers did, so I waited until I was ready to do it. You know, there's a lot of things that I've been up for where either I was too young, too old, or whatever. You know, and I'm just thinking, I'm just gonna go in there and have fun with it. My mom was a performer, a singer, and an actress. And so I was very aware, really young, about the dilemma of women aging. There's this sense of, I'm not gonna be given opportunities. I'm not gonna get to compete. I won't even be asked in the room. I'm just not attractive. People tell you something enough, you just kind of start thinking, God, yeah, I am, I'm too old. I'm too, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough, I can't do it. And it really wasn't until I reached the, the age of 50 and I started to decide that it was me that was putting the negativity on it. That if I think that every time you ask me how old I am that you're trying to hurt me, 
then you're hurting me. If I think you're asking me how old I am because you just saw me do something amazing and you have a sense that there's some time under my belt, then I'm giving you a gift, especially if it's another woman. As women artists living in an era defined by appearance, it seems we're always walking on a fine line. We're either too old, which is somewhere equated to undesirable or unattractive, or we are so over-sexualized that talent becomes secondary to hotness. Every woman that's in a male-dominant field always faces that challenge of being just a female. You want to be creative and you want to put yourself out there, but as a woman, so many people want so many other things other than just your, you know, your creativity. And you're, you're looked at as a piece of meat or you're looked at as, you know, something fun for the, for the producers or record labels or whatever, because they don't, they don't take you seriously. There's a lot of hate in the industry towards me, especially when you were a model in the beginning. People would look at you and people say, oh wow, she's another model DJ that just is getting booked because she was on this magazine and that magazine. Every time that happens, happens to me, it just makes me want to be like, maybe I'm not meant to be a DJ. There are a lot of men out there who are willing to take advantage of those women. I mean, I've walked into auditions before, only a couple auditions where, you know, it's, you don't get the right vibe from the guy and, you know, they scan you up and down and not the casting director kind of way. And Especially a beautiful woman. She's gonna get this, she's gonna get that. Everything's gonna be handed to her because she's a female. In the circus world, I feel like we're all at the bottom. <laughs> So men, women, it doesn't matter. So as a man, like, you have to kind of earn your stripes before you get in. As a female, it's easy to get in because they're like, oh, she's good enough for a girl. As an artist, you always have to um, fight for something. If you're gonna go in there and expect to get by by your looks, get by just because you're a girl, then what are you really fighting for? People, they wanna know what you've done, they wanna know what they can see you in, almost as proof. People don't see it as a legitimate way of living, too. I think that it's um, looked down on, uh, especially if you haven't been in anything that they've seen. <laughs> Say you want to be a creative person, whatever you define it, entertainer, artist, your business is figuring out how you can live so that you can do your art. So you have to go wherever you can do that. While many of our artists choose to pursue their dreams in creative hubs like Los Angeles and New York City, Paula's career, though she is a native New Yorker, requires her to travel the world. It's gonna be an awesome night, drinking some Red Bull. I get scared and I get nervous every time I go to my gigs because there has been a gig where I didn't know how to read the crowd. None of the crowds are reacting to you, no one's dancing, they're just standing. express myself with giving them the music they want to hear. You're going to listen to this music, and even though you've never heard this music before, I'm going to make you like it. Because I've learned to cope. I'm getting so much hate from social media, from so many different DJs that think that they should be in my spot. You if know? they deserve to be in a spot, they'd be in your spot. My ultimate dream is to become a big female DJ since it's a male dominant industry and eventually produce. But behind every hit track, powerful role, or great show, there are many moments in an artist's life that fall completely silent. That is the struggle. You know, you always have those, those tough moments where you're like, you know, am I wasting my time? Am I good enough? Am I doing this right? Am I here for no reason? Do people like what I'm putting out? Am I gonna waste all of my money and be broke and then have nothing to show for it? Or am I gonna be 45 years old trying to figure out if I could go back to school? I'm watching my bank account go straight down and it's, it's scary. I didn't start making money until I was in my 40s. You know, I didn't start till I was almost 40. I did theater for 10 years supported by doing aerial gigs. And sometimes a great artist is giving their best work to make someone else look better. If you're wondering just how Pink soared to such heights at last night's Grammys, you can thank that gold-painted woman right below her. 
That's choreographer and aerial artist Drea Weber, making sure pink goes up at just the right moment. In that world, when it's big egos, big money, big stars, you are giving your talent to the artist. And if you are hired and lucky enough to be given that opportunity, you have to accept that it's going to be uh, braided into that. I love creating visuals for arenas where the human body uh, 200 feet away can still be poetic. One of my childhood idols was Mikhail Brishnikov. He's an amazing, amazing dancer. And through his body and his emotion and his artistry, he could make you cry. And he never said a word. You could tell stories. It could actually be a character who has to be in the air. And, the and then I love performing in small venues where it's a very intimate experience, where I can marry story and aerial choreography with character and structure and, and music. I am the queen of Nile. The most fun thing to me is the, to braid the different disciplines. Part of the huge frustration in my life up until the five years ago was that I had never found a form that housed it all. Oh no. But now I have, and it's, it's pretty uh, intoxicating. Don't reach for the ground, because that was the main thing. But if you feel like you're not secure I think the best advice that I could give someone starting out would be to find people who you trust and admire and make them work with you. Work as hard as you can to anchor to what's important to you and forget the rest. It's your own strength of conviction, your own strength of your passion that's what's compelling. Passion is so attractive. Conviction is attractive. That is painful. That is painful. <laughs> yeah. The skin will tough, toughen up eventually, but yep, yeah, that's what we do for fun because we love it. Right? So how do you remain driven when the challenges often outweigh the successes? Because to create, you must remain open and vulnerable. Sometimes this is a state difficult to maintain. <laughs> I've thought about quitting so many times. That is a tricky question. Have I thought about quitting? Uh, yeah, like five minutes ago. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> but. I can't. When you have a kid, life ceases being about you. So I stepped away. In my mind, I was always coming back. All of a sudden, that comeback gets pushed back. You know, I used to be Juliet Fisher, the performer, and now I'm Jackson and Cole's mom. Music is who I am. Entertaining is who I am. And if I quit that, I would be quitting myself. There's been times where I've thought about it and definitely been like, okay, well, I am going to do my job nine to five, I'm gonna do my corporate thing and pay my bills and blah, blah, blah. But I've realized that if I just do that and I stop dancing or I stop creating, I actually get sad and depressed. As any artist, you know, it comes with like certain insecurities. Um, because I dabble in a lot of things. Like, I had a hard time saying like, oh, I make clothing or oh, I make jewelry because there's people that solely make jewelry and there's people that solely dance. That's all they do 100% of the time. So the second I'm like, oh, I make clothing, then all those people are like, oh yeah, well, I saw you dancing. <laughs> I saw you doing this, I saw you doing that. And I would get a lot of like, kind of like backlash, like as if it's not authentic. It's. It's uh, a very nerve-wracking experience when you're performing or you make something and you show it to people and you know you just obviously want everyone to have good feedback and sometimes they don't. My ultimate dream is to take care of my family. They've uh, given up everything so that I can figure skate and I can pursue the things that I want. There's also people that look up to me, like my brother for example. My brother was a drummer and now he's a DJ also because he went to one of my gigs and he says, wow, sis, like I, you look so happy. Um, my grandma, she was, she was my, my biggest fan and um, it was just, it was really hard to handle all of the rejection and 
not having like my number one fan there for me. Going through that time and seeing that, like reality really hitting you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, what love. I was extremely blessed at a really young age. I filmed a movie called Jersey Girl when I was seven years old um, with Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. I played their daughter. And I think I was too young to really appreciate like everything around me and realize how blessed I was. I look back at the interviews. I did an interview with Ellen DeGeneres. I was on Jay Leno, Sharon Osbourne, Ryan Seacrest. I had everything in the palm of my hands. And you know, now, 11 years later, it's just like, wow, what happened? Reality hit me and it's just like, okay, life isn't like this. Like, you really need to work hard to get to where you want to be. And you need to keep doing things for people to appreciate and not, not just be the little girl in Jersey Girl when you were seven years old. I think part of the fun of growing up is realizing how much the same human beings are and how simple how simple it is what we want and how we're all connected by a desire to try to figure out why we're on the planet for. Why face rejection and stereotypes daily? Why choose what the world sees as an unstable life? If you had to, to sit and work every day and not have anything else um, like a goal or something that you love to do, it would be crazy. It would be maddening for me anyway. And I know a lot of artists like ourselves are, you know, that's, that's what they live for, is to do something that you love rather than doing something that you have to do every day. So then why? Why give so much? What's the reward? I feel free. I feel like I'm on top of the world. It's always a happy time. You know, I look at my husband and I'm like, let's go play. I mean, as an adult, we don't get to say that that much. Let's go play. When I'm dancing, it's like nothing else exists. It's pure joy. My passion for my family drives me. My heart and my soul drive me. If I'm not doing these things, I'm not happy. My mom is an inspiration. The idea of getting to do what I love. I am my inspiration, I feel like. What drives me is that at my most free, I feel like I can, t I can t feel it in myself and that I can try to give it to other people when I'm in the air. The reason why I'm so driven is because there's so many people in my past um, that said, you can't do this. The love that I have for music and entertaining is what drives me to do this. And if I didn't love it, I wouldn't emotionally or mentally be able to deal with any of the rejection and any of the ups and downs of this business. I don't want just a job. I want it to be something I love, something I look forward to doing, something that fulfills me, that completes me, that makes me feel whole. That's what drives me. I'm going on tour and it's, it's very exciting. <sighs> I still don't know. <laughs> I don't know what my ultimate dream is. You know, my perception is that I am incredibly grateful for the opportunities that I've had. But it does become different because I'm more interested now in more challenge. I want more complexity. I want more demanded of me. Every day I just hope that I make a good living and I hope that I'm always able to have an artistic outlet and a creative outlet. And what's the most beautiful thing about being a human? It's our suffering. But it's also the beauty. So I think what drives me is this weird, these weird extremes that we live with as human beings. This incredible suffering and this incredible beauty. And if you get to be an artist and try to express that, um, you're lucky. Because a woman like you should make a dream come true.
like a bat from hell I run straight to your smell And then I can't quite quell What's a better than me This is possible, this is I'm strong enough to do this, and so are you. Like you will find that strength too. Whatever life throws at you, whatever struggle comes at you, you can still overcome it. There's still a way. Passion and perseverance really does pay off. It's passion for the craft. It's such a part of my life. It has helped empower me to have the confidence and the trust in myself and in my body and in follow your heart. You have a gift for the world and it's your responsibility to take care of it and to give it back to everyone else because that's what you're meant to do. Don't hold back. Love yourself and your gift. Never forget that. I'm still the same, same.